So, hey, <laughs> what, what was that like um, when they say ready? One. What? <laughs> <Act one. laughs> yeah. Welcome, you guys. And um, uh, Mo, thank you for a great day yesterday. I watched the service and your sermon. Such a positive word. And man, really good. Really hey, good. thank you, bro. Thank you, man. We missed you, bub. Well, yeah, we, we had to go and have a good time, though. Yeah. We, well, we miss being there, of course, but boy, it was such a great celebration uh, for Jamie and, and uh, the church in Flower Mound. And yeah, I, I just walked up and um, Mo and me, our mutual nephew, um, Ethan, was the first one to spot me. I was just walking up the parking lot and he comes <laughs> out, Uncle Keith, what are you doing here? And so it was a surprise and it oh, meant yeah. a lot to Jamie and yeah. Emily. It was really a good day. And uh, um, boy, Oliver and I had a fantastic time over at Man Camp oh, Friday and Saturday. It was just amazing. Next year, we're definitely going to have to take a whole slew of guys and, and be yeah, able guys. to take that in. It was it was superb. Gordy, how are you doing, brother? Okay. Great. Um, little thumbnail sketch on how the recovery is going and how your move, what the next steps are health-wise. How are things? Uh, it's, it's going, it's going, that's, I, I got another six months of stuff, you know, mm -hmm. certain medicines, but hopefully I can start swimming pretty soon, doing aqua aerobics, but, well, uh, yeah, it's slow, but sure. Well, you are definitely in our, our prayers and, uh, I appreciate I, you and Becky so much. You're an amazing gift to the team. Hey guys, chapter 10. Um, let's let's roll into week 10 here the mission trumps and um, I apologize for last week not being able to do it on Monday and then of course as it turns out it did not work for schedules to pull it off Tuesday so hopefully we can stay on track and um, as we move forward uh, through these remaining um today and then five more sessions um hopefully we can all be at each of the sessions and um it, we don't have to but that would just be my preference i i'd love to get as much input as possible and today just a little bit of an update um, for you guys um, on our situation so the board took a step of faith uh last thursday night and voted unanimously in favor of going on an adventure and uh, pursuing uh, planting a, a new campus. Um, the main thing I just really want to emphasize, and so does Oliver, I know his heart, that this is not a church plant, it's a church replication. We're not launching a, a site that's going to be its own church. If God ever did that in the future, you know, hey, praise the Lord, that would just be a bridge we cross when we come to it. But but for my vision, the vision is to see the city with uh, the church. And, um, and so um, the vision is very aggressive. Uh, my goodness, five churches in five years, how in the world would we pull that off? That would be a God thing. But here we go, we're trying and we're launching and we're just going, we're doing as much prepping and studying and praying and, and uh, as possible, but it's going to be, uh, a lot of it's going to require miracles from God. So mm -hmm. um, also just wanted to let you guys know that the, the church name committee met on October 3rd. We had a wonderful uh, session. Uh, we will meet again this coming Sunday. I said that wrong. We met on September 19th. We will meet this coming Sunday on October 3rd. No, I am not a time traveler. No, I did not go into the future and then come back. Um, but um, that team is tasked with um, is tasked with the um, the idea of creating a name that uh, flows off the tongue easily, that um, that captures what what we wanted to do and um, in a way that is trendy, substantive, biblical, landmark-ish. <laughs> I 
I'm I'm just throwing a lot of things out there. I don't know what what will be the final name, but we're going through a grid of nine different areas, ranking. I should say scoring each potential church name on those nine different areas, scoring them from one to a hundred, and then it feeds into a weighted matrix that actually spits out results and shows here's how this name scores in each of these categories. Those names then uh, we'll narrow down to five and we'll take them in front of uh, population centers, maybe in front of a Target or a Fry's, uh, possibly in different locations, uh, especially the area that we're targeting. And we're just going to say, would you take a 30 second survey and just tell us, does one of these names stand out to you more than the other? Would you be inclined to worship at a church with this name? And the way I've described it is, we are God's church. We answer to him. We get vision from him. And so only in the sense that we're trying to reach lost people. And if someone doesn't know Christ and if they were inclined to come to right. a church, man, I'm really interested in that. So uh, in that respect, um, it'll, all of that church name committee, it'll report to the board, um, but also um, all of that is fed into our upcoming October 17th lead team meeting all of you guys are invited it's uh from 5 to 8 p.m at our house right. here at our house and it's um chili and s'mores night and we're going to just have a lot of fun but we are also um going to talk about just you know the whole package and um uh, there that's the one contingency i want the lead team to feel very good about it and um, then after that, if, if there's really good acceptance from the lead team, then I don't feel any need, nor does the board feel the need to take it before the church for a, a vote, but just in an informative way. These are your leaders. You've elected us to lead. These are the decisions we've made, and here's the plan. So we're praying that you'll get on board with us. Um, anyway, just a brief update. So let's get going on um, just a little bit of discussion. I've got several things on my heart, but I always jump in first, and I feel like I don't mean to dominate the conversation. So I'm just wondering, um, this chapter, chapter 10, the mission trumps, was there anything to you guys that stood out that you wanted to make an observation about? The floor is yours. Well, I know in the military when, you know, when I went to, I went to several different leadership schools mm -hmm. and uh, the mission comes first. That was drilled into us, regardless of the hardships or the loss or the grumbling, which in the military, you know, it was easy, <clears throat> easier because, you know, you could hit them with an article 15 or or, uh, you know, do some type, you know, I mean, it was military. You know, they didn't really have a choice. Um, and of course, I know we're working in a volunteer organization, but the mission always comes first. Regardless, the yeah. mission comes first. Accomplishing so the mission. Our son, Nick, um, is completing today week one of basic training. Uh, we got a five minute phone call with him and it was, I could hear drill sergeants yelling in the background, four minutes. Three minutes, and I mean, it was he just you know, it was intense, and uh, yeah. and he's trying to tell me as much as he can, but he knew this going in, and then of course Gordy, Oliver, others in the church. I've talked to you guys, and the, the importance of basic training is to break down the. It's not about the individual. This is no longer about the individual. You are a unit, and. Um, I love that part. The mission trumps everything. What else, Oliver, Mo, you guys, what, what stood out to you? Yeah, uh, real quick on page 124. Um, that was a really good paragraph there. I won't read the whole thing, but uh, leadership is taking people where they need to go and yet resist going. Leadership, as I have defined it, is energizing a community of people 
toward their own transformation in order to accomplish a shared mission in the face of a changing world. I mm-hmm. thought that was pretty awesome, man. So it's like it's about energizing a whole group. And, and I, I heard a preacher say one time, I think he said, uh, when, you, when you're doing change, and I may butcher this, I'm sorry, but he's like, when you do change, um, it's kind of like it's God's ideal, but it's almost like you make, how do you, how did he say it? It's almost like you kind of make them think it was their ideal. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Does, does that sound yeah. right? I don't know, but um, well, that's, I think that's kind of what I get here is you're, you're leading them there and, and they, they may want to go, but they're, they're changing. It's a transformation, but yeah. um, it's, it's a really a team thing. But sometimes, you know how us people are, you know, we're kind of right. <laughs> so I don't know if I made any sense there at all. It's yeah. perfect. We all have um, this commitment to, hey, we want to fulfill the vision God has for us. But what I'm finding is uh, every individual has a different picture of what that looks like, you know, and the challenge oh, yeah. is getting all of us to commit to the, the long term vision and the dream right above that paragraph and i loved that too mo what you underscored yeah. that man that really stood out to me yeah. the previous paragraph ties into it and it's like the theme at the beginning of the chapter phase two leadership is to, is disappointing your own people at a rate they can absorb and i think it's critical for us as leaders to not put too much on people that they can't bear like if i just man, if I just come out and just say this, it would just break their spirit. And that's not ever what we want to do. But you're continually thinking, but I know where we need to go, you know? And so um, yesterday it was, there was a remarkable statement from the district superintendent in North Texas district. Um, Our brother Jamie was installed uh, as the pastor And Galen Klontz made a statement. He said, look, here at Grace Community, there's lots of different people involved, a lot of teams, and all of you are making great, you know, steps in ministry. But he just, he pointed at Jamie. He said, everything goes through the shepherd, everything. It's never going to be successful if, if, um, if lots of people try to do their own thing and maybe you don't even do it intentionally but you're always saying what is the vision of the under shepherd and if if his vision if what i'm doing does it support that vision does it move it forward and um i think that's so good um i love that we do have a vision statement and oliver i promise to give you time here in just a moment i hope you're (laughs) gathering Mm -hmm. some thoughts but find purpose in christ and share and that's a good statement but what do we share and this is like what i'm realizing we could be more clear about just what it is we want to share i think it's a great statement but when i say find purpose in christ and share that means i want a relationship with christ and i want to share that relationship with other people but it's more than i just want to share so that you can come to church and join us as we're all doing you know this wrote memorization and going through the paces. I want it to be, um, let's share this journey of discipleship together and continually be bringing new people in and continually uh, challenging ourselves and growing and and, uh, improving. So um, yeah, really, really great thought. Let me just finish a few comments and then Oliver be ready. So on page... um, Oh, where was mine? I thought I had underlined it. Oh, be patient with me, guys. Just one moment. Well, I, another thing I underlined, the bottom of 126, the key to their survival was the stability, the ability, I should say, the ability to run experiments in the margin. I like that. To continually explore new business and organizational opportunities and create potential new sources of growth. And um, um, oh, I see. I just 
I just right now got a, a message from Lee Coat. I mentioned him to you the other day, Oliver, and um, we'll be talking about that here in a few a few minutes. Um, Oliver, what stood out to you? You know, in the book, the whole chapter is great. Uh, what Mo uh, talked about, I actually have it underlined right there. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah. one twenty five, uh, it says right here. The focus shared missional uh, purpose of the church and organization will trump every other competing value. But basically, it says the mission trumps all. Yeah. And, you know, I'm thinking about Nick. He's in a boot camp this week. You know, I don't know how many people are in his unit. Let's say there's 75. I don't know. But you have 75 different people, different opposing views, different uh, viewpoints on life. And the company commander or drill sergeant has just a few weeks to get them unified into one single vision. Hmm. And basically, this book is teaching us to walk in the one single vision where Christ said, I am the vine and you are the branches. For us, it's that vision, the same thing. Everything has to feed into that vision or it's gonna die. So we need to clarify it and, and mm -hmm. just know that vision. Um, just real quick, you guys can see I'm drinking Starbucks right here, not a commercial, but they've got a mission statement that's oh, awesome. It's not a commercial either. There you go. Yeah, but with Starbucks, their mission statement is to, it says to um, uh, uh, basically to engage or to, uh, to inspire the human spirit, one cup, one neighborhood, one person at a time. And I thought, what a clear, concise statement. And for our, you know, five purpose of Christ and share, that's a beautiful statement. And if our vision is to, to grow five churches in five years, that needs to be in everything we say and do. And it'll happen. Yeah. It'll happen. Amen. So very good, Oliver. I remember years ago, um, I don't know, goodness, this is 20 years ago, but um, Starbucks wanted to become the front porch of all America. That was just a slogan that I kind of heard go away, but I always thought, man, that's really good, you know? Um, yeah, wonderful, wonderful book. You'll notice that they, they mm -hmm. quote Ronald Heifetz and Marty Linsky. I should say he quotes them, you know? Todd Bolsinger quotes Ronald Heifetz and Marty Linsky all throughout this book. You keep hearing that name over and over. And they really are um, leadership gurus. And um, I think probably the most important thing that I took out of this chapter was that I, as the leader, um, I need to be very clear about what the vision is not just to say the phrase we do all the time, but the expectations, like why it's important and what's motivating it. And yeah. certainly you guys as leaders too, and all of the leaders of our church, man, can you just imagine if we become so streamlined that we know, hey, here's the vision and the vision trumps everything else. And, and we really get focused because our approach is that, hey, we, there's a lot of things we could do, but we are zeroed in on this task. This is the mission. Can you imagine when everything gets filtered through the vision, how effective we really will be? You know, so um, well, the mission trumps. I, I, like I think. It. I think that the uh, commander's intent on page 128, uh -huh. where it talks about the commander's intent. Uh, yes, uh -huh. that's extremely important. It's not just, you know, uh, being a bull in a china shop mm. and say, this is the vision no matter what, but it's understanding the intent. And then you can do things to fulfill the intent of what Christ commands and what our particular intent for the church is and what, you know, your personal vision is, mm -hmm. you know, is extremely important that comes through conviction. And then, you know, to help us fulfill those those uh, visions. Yeah. Gordy, you touched on something so important right there. I, I'm going to piggyback on what you just said about the commander's intent. It's the very last words of page 128. And it goes into the next page. It says, the purpose of the commander's intent is to empower subordinates to be able to achieve the goal of the goals of the missions if the circumstances change and they need to adapt so um 
I mean, in our language, we don't use commander and we don't right. use subordinates. You know, that would go across like a lead balloon. Right, right. The commanders and the subordinates rank and file, get lined up. You know, that doesn't work in church life. But in a sense, we are in that spiritual army. And I love the way it describes it because this is Ephesians 4 language right here. Mm -hmm. God gave apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers as a gift to the church, for what reason? To equip the saints so that they might carry out the work of ministry. That's Ephesians 4, 11, 12. That's, man, that spells it out for us. And I think very often, it, you know, we can think, well, you know, we've got pastors in that their job. That's what they do. You know, we'll just trust not them. And they don't mean it in a negative way at all. It's just like, well, we've got somebody that's sort of the expert at that. We'll just let them. But the the role of the commander is to empower the subordinates and to, to just the role of the pastor is to empower the team and release the team and man, let it become that final oiled machine that God intended it to be. Any other thoughts before we switch gears for the remainder? This is such good discussion. It is good, <laughs> good stuff. Good. Be a pepper drink, Dr. Pepper. Well, no, I guess that was an advertisement, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, well, so let's do switch gears uh, for the rest of our time together and, and talk about not just this one thing, but other things that may come up as you start thinking about having a, um, a multiple site ministry. The language we're using is campus. It's a campus. And uh, um, we've, we've chosen uh, to appoint uh, Oliver as campus pastor to the new site. Um, and I'm thrilled with that. I don't know beyond that as we go, as we start thinking three and four years in the, in the, into the future, um, the Lord will lead us and guide us. Um, we have not finalized um, salaries at this point. We've talked, we've discussed about salaries, and um, there's really wonderful input and interesting and engaging conversation and ideas and so that's still in the works, but however, uh, specifically for Pastor Mo, we realize, I realize that we're asking your ministry load yet again to increase and um, to oversee not just one worship team, but worship video technology for two different sites. And that that is, um, that's a heavy load. So we, we want to reward that. Our heart, the heart of the board is we want to reward that. We want to get behind that. And, and so um, while it is not finalized at this point, we, we really truly just want you to know how incredibly valuable you are to the team, Mo, and that we recognize that it would be a mistake to add responsibility without compensating for that responsibility be praying for us about that so to this point we have looked at a lot of sites um it appears unless unless the lord has something up his sleeves that we're, that we're not aware of it appears that we're not going to be able to lease a um a, a storefront or another uh building that might be something that we could just lease it and it would be our building Monday through Friday as well. It appears that we're going to be renting space to use for worship. Um, here's a couple of the options that are in front of us. And before I move on to that, let me just say that primarily, um, and there's just, there's such limited space available to begin with. In Verado and in Australia, I mean, there's just, man, it's so, if something comes up and it gets scooped up immediately and there's maybe just not even, and when I say very little, not even a handful, I mean, there's maybe two or three and then they'll be gone. So, um, but the ones that were available that have just been too expensive and out of our range. So that sort of changes strategy slightly in this sense. We, we had hoped to have 
um, a, a building where it could sort of be the church identity Monday through Friday as well, you know, that this was a place where people would view it as church. However, some of the opportunities that are coming up, uh, we did talk with Holiday Inn Express. They have a really nice, in fact, two of them, nice meeting rooms. It would work within our budget. We could do it on a month to month basis without long-term commitment. That is very attractive to us. It's not ideal because it's not Verado. That's Watson Road, that's Sundance identity. Um, today I called to check on Verado High School Performing Arts Center. I uh, did not get through the person that I need to. I'm awaiting a call back. Be praying about that. That would be a fantastic venue. It would be, it would really be ideal. Um, there is also um, a community center that um, Oliver is checking on, and I don't expect you to have had any success yet, but I know that it's in the works. It's one of the goals for this week. So just be praying with us about it. You know, we're open to different ideas. Um, I mean, some have suggested, what if we rent from a, like a Seventh-day Adventist church? The only one I'm aware of in our area is just two miles from the church, and it doesn't really accomplish what we're looking for location-wise. That would be ideal. You know, they have worship on a Saturday. We could use their building on a Sunday. I don't really want to rent from another church building and have a Sunday afternoon service. My vision has always been for it to be simultaneous with what we're doing and just multiple sites, one church, multiple locations. Um, but anyway, just be praying with us. Any comments or questions about that to this point? We got several things we can talk about, but just wanted to update you guys. I had thought about the uh, Holiday Inn Express a couple of years ago, actually. Oh, uh huh. Yeah. I mean, that's, uh, yes, yeah, it's, it's on Watson. Uh, right. You have a great meeting room. It's a beautiful yeah. meeting room. I have not been to the other motel. It's called Home Two, and mm -hmm. it's owned by the same people. And yeah. they, they told me if you don't like this space, there's one right down the street and they also have rooms. So that's an option. It becomes a challenge because um, the, the area we want to target has, yeah. has not been Sundance. That's not really what we've been looking to do. Although if, if we landed there, that would be amazing. But our, I mean, what God's put on my heart and it, it is really confirmed with Oliver and Pastor Mo, you said something uh, at one point in this journey, guys, I hope we're not giving up on Verado. I have it so right. strong in my heart. It feels like that's where God's leading us. Yeah. So the challenge is if you start meeting in a, um, if you start meeting in a hotel uh, on Watson Road, that yeah. definitely is not identified with Verado and yeah. you're calling it Verado, then that's, it, it's yeah, going to be a more difficult challenge yeah. to overcome long-term. Um, hey, Keith, um, are we, and, and man, I know, I know you guys are working hard on this. I know you are. Um, have we thought about even maybe someone who lives in Verado starting out just as a house church or anything like that? Yeah, so the timeline is, that, and that's exactly what we're planning to do. October 30th, November 30th, I'm not sure about November, and then the end of December, one, one Saturday night of each of those months, there will be a private preview meeting in a home. It's that the church is starting on October 30th, but that will be in a home. We're still determining that. We've got a, a, pretty, a couple of pretty good ideas on, on locations. Um, in January, still meeting in the home, but it'll be meeting twice. And help me, Oliver, I think is that on a Sunday morning at that point? I think it switches in January to Sunday morning. Sunday morning. So twice on in January, twice in February. In the month of March, we really start to ramp up. Still meeting in a home. This is unless we change, unless there's change. Still meeting in a home four times now in March. And all of from March 1 up until April 17th. So the, the goal is that on April 3rd would be our first public worship venue. April 10th and then April 17th is Easter Sunday. That would be the launch date. That's like a grand opening. But the strategy 
is to ramp up to it definitely. And and I don't know if by April 17th, Mo, that's a really good point. Like what if we get there and we just, we don't have it figured out, but what if the home side is really going great? Yeah. Hey, maybe, I don't know. So, but we're open to those ideas. Any other it's, things you guys? Uh, I was going to ask real quick. You may be mm -hmm. wanting to move on. Um, what about that um, big yellow building out there? Um, in West Park, it's it's called the Educational Center or something like that. Do well, they have a place to, to rent? Yeah. Which one are we West, talking about? West, I just drove by today. Yeah. It's yellow and it's big. <laughs> it's called it's in West Park, you said. No, no, it's, West no. it's West Side Educational something. Oh it's yeah, that's Calaverde. Calaverde Educational Worship Center. I mean, no. Worship Center Educational Re. Yeah, that's the first one we checked on. They're not, oh, they don't rent. Next door to that. No, that, that's a different one. We're talking next door to that. It's called West Mac. West they teach Mac. nursing, engineering. Yeah. Oh, and that, that's what you're talking about. Mo, I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah. That's a that's a high school. No, well, it's high a, school? It's a, oh, it's oh, a, I thought it was college. college. Is it's it location? Part school? of EMCC. Oh, no, it's yeah. not part of EMCC, but it is community college. Yeah. Um, or junior right. college okay. at least, West, West Mac. Yeah, and mm -hmm. uh, we need that to check is. on that. That's a really good thought. I, in fact, I've done the same thing just like you, Mo. I've driven by and I thought, oh, what about that place? So maybe, yeah. Okay, any other, just, I mean, just daydreaming and uh, vision casting out loud, any others that you can think of, you guys? All right, so let's, uh, we're down to six minutes. Um, lest I forget to mention this, um, next time when we come together, one of the things I want to talk about is teaching pastors and the rotation, like how often and, and who and how to utilize different people. Um, I've, I've definitely got some ideas on that, but I'd like for you guys to be thinking um, I, I want to get your input, definitely. So, in other words, um, Pastor Oliver will be the, the face of Verado campus. Uh, he will be the pastor. Things will flow through him. I'm the lead pastor of the whole organization. I'll, I'll definitely be vision casting and all of that. But you'll be, you'll be the contact person, the leader of that organization. And, and the one that they see week in, week out. But in addition to that, I'll be popping in at Barado. There'll be times where we're just simply switching places and, and Oliver will preach at uh, Buckeye. And more and more, um, all of our preachers, all of our teachers, I want to utilize individuals and give them opportunities to speak. Um, yeah. And so there's also next week, um, Oliver, I just wanna have you share Maybe we'll have a, a few uh, actual legs on this idea that you mentioned about uh, providing a venue for recruiting uh, speakers and just volunteers and things. And, and if it happens, I think it would be a, great, a real God idea. It's really a great idea. But um, so be thinking that way as, as we come to next week. We've only got four minutes left. I think we can squeeze this in. I had prepped you last time to be ready to talk about hospitality. And um, I've got my phone here to, to jot down notes to myself. And um, I, I wanna just ask you, let me just prompt you with this question. Um, how, how do we want to do hospitality at the new site? And what I mean by that, when someone walks in the doors at BFA, um, there's bottles of water. Um, by the way, that that gets a, a little expensive, but more than that, it becomes labor intensive. Mo, how many times have you and I been carrying in cases of water <laughs> on Sunday morning? So yeah. that even is an area where we need other volunteers to step up. And um, but not just the the water, but I think at the very least we need to provide coffee. 
you know, and we, a, a coffee bar, a coffee station, self-serve. Are there other ideas you guys have had? Pastor, the water, I think, is very important, especially as we gear up towards summer next year. When it's warm, that water is going to really come in handy. Mm. Um, but I think we should duplicate whatever the hub is doing. If the yeah. hub has coffee and water, we should do that and, and not like anything more like cookies or anything like that. I mean, we should have it, the churches so in sync that if we walk from one to the other, we feel the same welcoming spirit, the same mm -hmm. atmosphere, the same everything. We don't want to say, oh, I like this one better than this one, or this one's not as good as that one. And, and they do Krispy Kremes over there. I'm going to that one. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. And I agree. I think uh, not just hospitality, but just across the board um, on just oh, church yeah. life. I would love it if someone goes into this location or that one in five years from now, let's say they go into Tartesso or Douglas Ranch or something like that, that there is a cohesiveness. Hey, we all see that CCV sign all over the valley and you, oh, you yeah. just know just by that identity alone, you, you go, wow, I know that they're connected. And I think that's a good point. Uh, what else? What do you guys feel? Um, is there anything we should add at BFA like that is within reason? I mean, I mentioned Krispy Kreme's brother. They're from the Lord. I'm just telling you. But <laughs> they are expensive too, you know, but maybe yeah. I don't know if we want to have some kind of I, I did get some feedback from one guy. Um, most people just love having anything out there, but one guy told me, oh, we used to go to such and such church over here. Man, they had donuts. Boy, my kids love that so much. I don't know, you know, so what yeah. are your thoughts? Do we have- He says fellowship like a donut. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Gordy, go right ahead. We used to do, we, used to, we had a uh, hospitality coordinator there at the bridge and of course we tore down and set up for five years and it was a fine oiled machine i'll tell you we had it had it together but we had donuts most of the time and um so that's a that's a key point i want to sneak it in here hospitality coordinator yeah. that person if something changes at one side it changes at both you know it's it keeps that yeah. consistency yeah and, uh, and we and she was responsible for the volunteers and and the scheduling for who would bring the donuts it was it was really done well we're at less than a minute i don't know how many seconds thanks guys for joining and um keep reviewing all the stuff online and there'll be more stuff coming more emails texts and things like that love you all